Uh, making sure it's actually recording my mic last time. I love it when OBS mysteriously does not record my mic. I don't know who listened. If any of you tried to listen back to last session, uh, it Did recorded you all of you. Last session? Oh, I posted the link to the playlist, and uh, I uh, the playlist is always updated the day after session. Gotcha. Yeah, I figure rather than just spamming a bunch of links. <laughs> All right, no need to throw shade at me like that. No! <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to. <laughs> um, but uh, where we left off last time was all of you uh, leaving where you had been camping with Vinny. Uh, and totally nothing else happened there. Definitely no fighting or assassination attempts or anything of the sort it's fine um uh and you guys had been presented with a lead on uh where to find uh, a couple of your targets uh that is to say uh, an aracocra named uh aldaz uh who apparently uh is of the eagle variety and is hiding amongst uh the refugees and similarly Another lead you guys have, Krajire, is also hiding among the refugees. And Krajire is the one that you guys found a letter addressed to. Uh, but you are all walking together back into the city. Uh, just to double check real quick, are there any conversations of any sort you guys are wanting to have before uh, starting to search among the refugees? Or just going straight to look for these two? I did want to have a chat with Brutus at some, but that, that doesn't have to be done. Fair. Very, very fair. Uh, then, unless you guys want to spend uh, a bunch of time uh, asking around, uh, we can get to the punch. And those of you who have been interacting with the refugees beforehand, as you were refugees yourself, uh, Maeve and Phineas, if you guys want, you can both make either a history or investigation check to uh, locate where you think it is most likely to find uh, refugees who might be hiding. <laughs> and I have to move stuff around on my desk again because I was working from home once more. <laughs> Which means my desk is a bit of a mess, and I napped instead of tidied. Go off. That is... I can do maths. Can I do maths? <laughs> Seventeen. Can this heat? <laughs> Seventeen. Slay. So sadly, Maeve with the six, uh, <laughs> it has been long enough that while you have some vague ideas, it's probably changed since then. Since now you have, like, a house in the city... You know, you, you haven't had to be actively amongst the refugees in a good few months. Uh, but Phineas, you had been among them up until extremely recently. Like, even now, you probably would be. Uh, but uh, that means with the 17 uh, that you have a strong idea of where uh, a lot of the refugees might gather if they wanted quiet or privacy or if maybe they were trying to slip under the radar. Uh, you know that a lot congregate uh, at one of the charity, uh, like, uh, doctor's clinics. Um, so that is a possible option. And you also know that there is a uh, essentially abandoned plot of land uh, that a, a lot of refugees have set up tents on. And there are similarly uh, some charitable folk who go there to distribute food to those who don't want to come to the actual refugee camp. Uh, which one would you guys like to investigate? I think if they're hiding, they're more likely to sort of be out of the main group. And if they are corrupted, then being at a doctor's office seems the 
wrong choice. So I suggest maybe we go see. We head over to the plot and investigate over there first. A sleigh. You're very quiet, Chloe. My god. <laughs> I was yell. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but is that the only we can do now? If you think that's the best. Alright. Uh, basic deduction, no Watson. <laughs> Watson is now a canon. No. <laughs> uh, but walking over uh, towards uh, the field that you've uh, seen this happening on, Phineas. Uh, it looks generally quiet because it's still pretty early in the day. Uh, it's like 6 a.m. since you guys did not get much rest after the whole, you know, attacked. Um, but uh, there are a lot of tents set up. There's a few people who are already awake and like cooking over a fire. Um, you could try asking around. You could try uh, a lot of different options. What would you guys like to try to... Look for anyone suspicious in this area. Um, Brutus is keeping his eyes open for any uh, thieves markings he might recognize. Uh, refugee camps tend to have at, at least opportunists. Uh, there's a lot of places to pickpocket people, that sort of thing. So he's going to be keeping his eyes open for anything of that nature. Alright. I think I'm looking straight from our cut crap. Um obviously Ivanas doesn't know how many there may be in this refugee camp. But I'm only scanning for an hour cut crap. Slay. Uh oh. oh yeah, go ahead. Um I is there anybody there that Phineas might recognize well i can see Phineas being someone who would have tried to help the best he can so i'm just wondering if there might be there might be somebody that he is at least maybe on name basis with that he might be able to prod for information um yeah you know a, a couple people around but honestly you had been doing a lot of recovering and then you know uh, trying to get your body ready again for combat. So honestly, the person who might have known the most was one of your parents, since they would have spent time here uh, yeah. during your recovery. Um, but you can certainly try. It. You may not have the best chance, though. Uh, That's very fair. If you're wanting to use like interpersonal connections like that, you can roll history at disadvantage. Uh, Ivana, if you're wanting to, uh, oh, and of course anyone, if you're wanting to be keeping an eye out for uh, a specific person, such as an Aarakocra, you can roll Perception. Uh, and if anyone is looking for clues of any kind, then you can roll Investigation. Let's at least have a variety of rolls. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go with, don't worry about it, that's a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nine on Investigation. Slay. Fourteen perception. Another slay. Uh, six perception. <laughs> All right. Uh, so with the collection, the with the collection of under tens, I salute you guys. Not much <laughs> you can do about that. With the pair of fourteens, uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Maeve, you're you're keeping a sharp eye out, uh, and you've got you know you've got strong eyes, the ranger lifestyle, <laughs> uh, and you are especially familiar with not only this city but also this forest, and what with this being a city in the midst of the forest, there are a lot of branches. There's a lot of high trees. These are trees that are practically the heights of redwoods, so there's a lot of places up there where someone like an Aarakocra, which is a flying race, uh, could hide. So you're keeping a very 
sharp eye out among the branches, places where somebody who could presumably fly and even camp up in the trees could be. You don't see something right at this moment, but I'll assume, unless you say otherwise, that you're uh, keeping an eye out as as we progress. Yes, I'll do that. Slay. Uh, then with the uh, pair of 14s, uh, you know, beginning to look through the camp, uh, trying to keep your eyes open, look for anything suspicious. Uh, there's no sign of uh, an, really many aracocras at all, never mind uh, one that looks like an eagle. Um, but you do pretty quickly find that there are uh, what those sharp-eared among you might recognize as people with a coughing illness. Though there are glimpses of occasional medics creeping through here, uh, it's hard to tell for sure whether it would be an illness that you guys would be wary of or if it would be just something, you know, people get sick easier when they're injured and in, you know, close quarters such as this. Um, but there is somebody uh, coughing particularly hard, uh, Brutus, as you begin to press further into the camp uh and it is uh, a cough and this like kind of painful sound to it that uh reminds you a lot uh of a certain someone from a cell uh they are inside a tent however who don't like that (laughs) that is exactly brutus's thought process currently actually uh i think he's gonna let it go though like if that's the only thing jumping out at him i don't think he's gonna chase that lead right now fair uh i forget was was uh grim the other one who had rolled the four, other 14 or was that somebody else no i rolled a nine i slay you i rolled 14 i slay uh then karis you probably pick it up and while you do know that there is a sickness going around, you haven't really had hands-on exposure to it. So while you do notice the coughing, it I would say it's not familiar to you in that manner. In that case, I'm probably not as wary as uh, Brutus is. Uh, but, uh, anyone who is asking around specifics, such as, you know, even with the lower role, Phineas, you asking around for people you personally know or who might know your parents, uh, you eventually, uh, find some people, uh, and you end up finding yourself, uh, in a conversation, uh, with an older, uh, half-orc woman. Uh, with a kind of like a handkerchief tied tightly around her head Uh, and she's like trying to rock a baby uh, to sleep who uh, presumably she's trying to keep from crying while everyone else is still sleeping in the morning (laughs) Uh, and she's saying to you "Uh, you'll have to send word when when your parents arrive safely They they were good to us here I will but you said you're you're looking for some people. Uh, do you have uh, names? This is where Quinn doesn't remember. It out um, the eagle our poker is called Aldos. And then there's Cra- is it Crash? Crash. Yeah. Crash. Um, I'm looking specifically for um, someone named Aldos. They're an Aracocra. Uh, I've seen a, a number of Aracocra uh, around here, but uh, I, I don't recall one named uh, Aldos or any that stuck around. Um, I believe he is specifically sort of eagle-esque. 
eagle. Eagle adjacent. Hmm. I... <laughs> I, no, there was one that kind of looked, you know, e eagle-ish in color. You know, the, the the pale head and darker feathers. Uh, but that was, oh my God, it's maybe a month ago. I, I had I don't remember seeing him since. I mean, I I suppose he could be camping up in the trees. I know there's a. A few people who've done that to try and have their own space, but uh, I, I at least haven't seen him in any recent times. No worries, thank you. And remind me, Quinn, had you mentioned the name Krizure? No, I just said Aldos at first. Can Fair. someone, because it's, it's been a few weeks and I'm very bad memory brain right now. <laughs> Crazy is unknown. All you guys, just... yeah, all you guys know is you found. Well, so the other part of the party before you came found uh, a suspicious drop point for some letters, uh, and there were signs of somebody camping there, and a letter left behind addressed to Crazy Not sure Phineas would mention that at this point, purely because at the moment, in his mind, we're trying to find the Aracocra. Work. And actually, has that been brought up to Phineas and... Uh, yeah, we, I think we would. We definitely would have filled you in if you were being brought in. Mm -hmm. I think that was how we introduced ourselves, practically. Was, hey, we're these people, here's what we found. Yeah. <laughs> You can tell it's been a few weeks because I remember. <laughs> so I'm really sorry. No. Like I've taken, I've actually taken some notes wildly for me. Oh my god, um, really? I know. <laughs> right? um, <laughs> Chloe, that was so fucking me. <laughs> Chloe, Chloe knows yeah. who I am as a person. <laughs> I don't even take offense to that tone. Um, B, I also doesn't help that I'm also sick. So my brain is extra cloudy. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, I don't think he would bring up Krizure yet, just because, like, at the moment they're focusing on trying to find, um, Aldos, so. Slay. Uh, he, however, uh, will give her a gold, uh, a gold coin, um, and thank her. Uh, she's very surprised to be presented a gold coin, uh, and, and she... Gives you a, a sharp look. I, I didn't. I didn't tell you for for payment. You don't have to be giving me anything, kid. I know, but and I'll gesture gently to her baby. Like it's hard enough when your life isn't turned upside down. So well, we we appreciate it. Thank you. sort of give her a, a gentle nod and then I'll sort of head back to the group and just relay what she told me which may or may not be useful in any regard <laughs> I think since Phineas obviously telling us um, only asked about our, our, only asked about our dos, I would like to go around and ask about Kajulu yeah um, Ivana, <laughs> you are self-described an intimidating person. <laughs> yeah, I try my best to. to I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. give. I'll, I'll offer some coin to anyone who would like to try and help us. Roll persuasion. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> Sounds promising. Uh, so I do have a One plus million. five equation. So I do have a plus five. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a seven. 
<laughs> <Good girl. laughs> um, but if if I'm if I'm outwardly offering a little bit of coin, can I roll with advantage? I was gonna give you disadvantage. You got okay, flat because you were offering advantage. money. Okay, I'll I'll see. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right then. Uh, uh, no one wants to talk to me. <laughs> I mean, people talk to you. You just quickly determine it's not anything useful, since it's mostly uh, narrows down to I don't know money. <laughs> uh, um, uh, Maeve. I'm just scared now. <laughs> <laughs> You're keeping a sharp eye out. Uh, and you don't see movement. And, you know, you're listening to your companions around you, trying to get answers. Uh, people either don't seem to be much help, whether that is because they don't know anything, or maybe you guys don't know enough to tell them what you're looking for. Uh, however, it's not even a flicker of movement that you catch with your perception. What you do catch is almost your wrist feels cold for a moment, and then there is a brush of wind across your skin that almost calls you to look in a different direction. And you think that this person was trying very, very hard not to be seen, and you just barely catch them uh a flicker of a dark feather very up high in the trees uh in a way that you're not sure how you would get up to if you didn't have climbing gear or some form of flight okay i'm gonna go over lay this to grim <laughs> and i'm also going to ask grim if they have any Thing that could possibly help to see anything further. That's not really my expertise. I... I don't really have anything that can help with viewing up there. Well, do you have any further suggestions? Do you think we should tell everyone else? It might just be a hunch, but I think I saw something. You think you saw something? You should probably tell somebody who is a little bit more adept at movement than me. Ivana next. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, as you are... Were you, like trying to privately talk with Grim about this or was this just no. like at normal volume? Yeah. This was just like anyone can hear. <laughs> Fair. Vinny kind of perks up from when uh, she's standing nearby. Ah, uh, well, um, I don't know how super useful this is since I can only cast it on one person, uh, but I can uh, make one person fly. I also have wings, which could make two of us. That's enough to try to figure out what's going on. We have Chloe! This is so sad. <laughs> Welcome back, Chloe. I'm uh, so sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, hey, if it's working now, that's the important part. Uh... To say briefly uh, about some roles I just had to call for in private. Um, uh, Ivana, you do not know it now, mm. uh, but you have been pickpocketed. Uh, and somebody in the party now has something of Ivana's. Fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Uh, Vinny has offered to cast fly on somebody, and Karis has wings, 
So does anyone volunteer to follow Maeve's tip that there is somebody hiding up among the trees? I mean, I don't mind going. I think I'm the strongest of us to be able to grab someone. Unless somebody else would prefer to. The only person that I would think of would be Maeve if they're not up there. I think I'm good on the ground. <laughs> Go for it. I do also have the option of... Okay, I genuinely... I'm gonna have to Google Redwood, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I wouldn't be able to do that. I was gonna say, like, if there were like low branches that were like within a thirty, if branches were like within thirty foot gaps of each other, I could literally just use my echo to yeet myself up the tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But if these are like redwoods, and there's definitely no chance. <laughs> Those branches don't look like they start until they're like a hundred feet up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> They are very tall. <laughs> yeah. So, I think this is the point where Brutus just kind of waves a hand and goes, I can be a backpack for someone if it's <laughs> numbers we're worried about. I, I'm also fairly okay with climbing stuff like i wouldn't want to actually climb but if someone can get me up there i'm pretty sure i'd be okay Slay. i'm gonna get strong um, um, Karras is not strong so you could be a good person to carry Brutus. uh i'll i'll let somebody Technically, it probably wouldn't be allowed, but I'll let somebody with fly cast on them carry Brutus, because Brutus is so itty bitty. <laughs> <laughs> I am leaning into the short jokes for the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to make fun of me for it, I'm going to exploit it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or we could just coax him down. I mean, if we can fly, why wouldn't we? With what incentive? Money? I mean, do, do we even know for sure that it's him at this point? No, we're just, there just might be somebody up there. We're kind of chasing it, whatever lead we can get. And we have at least one person who can fly and one person that can make someone fly. So at least one person should go up and check. I, as I said, I am more than happy to be the one that flies up there because, again, and I, he just sort of like looks around the group and it's not like it's not disparaging or anything. He's just like, I'm pretty sure I'm the one that can grab this person and stop them from flying away if it is our guy. It he does kind of have a point there. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Chloe was so outraged by that suggestion. They just eat. <laughs> <laughs> <Cool. laughs> Nobody arm wrestled with Phineas. <laughs> Phineas accidentally rips Brutus's arm off. <laughs> if I would like to keep their feet planted on the floor, thank you. <laughs> so let's just see what Phineas is going to yeah. take it trip into the sky. Alright. Uh, Brutus, I mean, are you going... if that's the plan we're going with, I also have a little something something that could make it just a little bit stronger if she felt the need. Uh, I think Brutus is going to stick down because he's... And Phineas is emphasizing, I'm the guy who can grab this motherfucker and keep him from getting away. So... I think Brutus is just going to be like, you know what? If that's the plan, I'm just extra weight. I'm going to be in the way. I'm going to stay down here. 
it's like. Uh, then with that, uh, Vinny turns to uh, you, Phineas, uh, gives you a little tap on the shoulder, uh, and casts fly on you. And she says, all right, uh, you have ten minutes. Be on your way down at the end. Um, or else, uh, yeah, just be down. <laughs> yep. Um... <laughs> And uh, I'm gonna, uh, as as Vinny goes to like tap me with the with the fly, I'm gonna take off my glaive, and I'm um gonna just hand it to Ivana, um, mm -hmm. to hold, because you know if if it is our guy, the last thing I want to do is like fly up there with this big fuck off glaive and terrify him. Um, yeah. But I'm ready to grab the guy if necessary. So yeah. So then I will fly up. Um, Before you fly up, would you like a cheeky enhanced ability on your strength? Yes, please. I will do that. Slay. And I'm guessing you're doing strength? Yes, the uh, bold strength. Slay. We love to hear it. Uh, then, uh, as you both head up, um, da -da 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 -da. uh, most of the lower branches are indeed, uh, cut down, most likely because there are a fair amount of flying mounts in the city, uh, so they have cleared out the lower branches so that they might fly through the city. Uh, so it takes a while until you two are actually up, uh, among the branches that are big enough and strong enough to support a person. Uh, and you do start to see that there are indeed a few people who are camping up here. Some with uh, climbing gear, uh, some who've kind of strung up uh, small shelters between the trees, others who straight up burrowed into the trees. Um, it mostly looks like either other refugees or just people who live in the city but prefer to be like extremely private. Um, and there doesn't seem to be anything instantly suspicious. Uh, exactly, Goner. Uh, so can you both roll me a perception check? Perception. Who is totally both? Phineas's strong point. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, 21 for Chorus. Jesus that Christ. 14. <laughs> I have a plus one, guys. <laughs> Phineas. I am a strong boy. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of different things to see. Uh, it is darker up here since you're among the canopy. Uh, and while you can see in the dark, it is still, you know, uh, more difficult to differentiate uh, people up here. Uh, however, Karis, uh, you are used to flying, flying among trees, uh, looking for things uh, up high. Uh, you you know what to watch for. So after gaining a bit of height and checking out this area of people camping, uh, you catch uh, one particular tree uh, that looks to have mostly been left alone, except there is what looks to have been a giant knot in the tree. Uh, that has been hollowed out and could fit a person and you catch that there are a few feathers littered in front of it as if fallen maybe when someone was trying to squeeze inside and while most of them are dark there is one that has a white tip if phineas is with me i will signal to him the mark if he's not with me i will go back Get him and take him to the map. I'm with you. Yeah, and I guess I'll just... Together. Yeah, and I guess I'll just point out the map that's there. Just play. Alright. Um, Are you... I will... Go ahead. Is there, like, a branch in front of this knot, or is the knot, like... There is a branch. Uh, like, like, a decently thick branch, probably, like... I'd say just under ten feet wide. It's it's massive, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will uh, fly over and land on the branch and approach and see if I can see any if anybody's inside. 
Slay, are you being sneaky or are you making yourself known? Try and be a bit sneaky. I say um, try because I have disadvantage, so... Yeah, go ahead and roll stealth with disadvantage. That's an 11. That could have been a 21, but it's disadvantage. <laughs> That's an 11. <laughs> All right. Uh, you touch down. Uh, you think you're quiet as you can be with your armor and also not being used to flying and whatnot. <laughs> uh, um, you don't hear anything from inside, uh, but as you stick your head in, it is a very tight space. Uh... There are, there is a small pile of blankets, it looks like, uh, and there's not much space to hide in here because there's somebody pressed up against the back wall, very futilely trying to almost disguise themselves in with the bark, with their dark feathers kind of pulled up, uh, in front of their body, uh, but very clearly, uh, a, a medium height Aarakocra. I'll kind of, uh, sort of, like, crouch slightly. It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. Are they clearly eaglish? Uh, the wings are pulled up in front of the face, uh, but as they shift to get a better look at you, uh, you do indeed see, uh, a paler head, uh, as they kind of hold your gaze suspiciously. And real quick, for reference of somebody, of anybody who might have never seen an Aarakocra before, this is kind of what they look like. Bird. Russian just makes me want to be like, Kaka, motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> he just Seth. looks surprised, like, you said what? <laughs> it's out of my house. <laughs> uh, um... But they kind yeah. of stare at you Phineas suspiciously. Will... Yeah, Phineas will keep kind of like a gentle expression. Um, are you Aldos? What's it to you? We've been looking for you. No shit. <laughs> As I said, we don't want to hurt you, we just want to talk. Talk about what? There's lots we could talk about. Um, never seen a Yonti fly before. That's that's something to talk about. That would be, be magic. Um, not my strong suit. Why don't you... Come down to the ground with me, and my friends have some questions. That's all. Right. I think I'd rather stay up here. Really suggest that you come down with me. And I'd like him to make a wisdom saving throw as I cast suggestion. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to say roll persuasion. Yeah, roll <laughs> save. <laughs> Look, my persuasion is terrible. <laughs> he has a point. Play to your strengths. Uh, that is a seven. That is a failure. <laughs> Slay. <laughs> my DC isn't that high, so I'm very glad. <laughs> <laughs> because it's based on because it's based on I think it's a no is it based on my intelligence but either way Phineas is not a mental stats boy he is a physical stats boy real uh, and you had cast suggestion suggestion yeah so I cast suggestion that he comes down to the ground and talks to my friends slay he's still very anxious uh, but he pulls himself out of the corner he had kind of tried to press into. Uh, and once you get out of the way, does indeed step out onto the branch and prepare to fly down. I will fly with him and stay adjacent to him. And just to preface, the entire time, 
Phineas is just going to be ready to grab him if he needs to. <laughs> just to preface this, during this conversation, Phineas is like geared to grapple him <laughs> if he needs to. Uh, as he prepares to fly, <laughs> you do notice that uh, there is this uh, like choker necklace uh, that he is wearing. Uh, and there is a small, uh, kind of dull-looking gem uh, set in the center. That's this uh, dusty gray. Uh, and something about it catches your eye. It doesn't feel familiar, but it's... The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Uh, and then he takes off and begins to circle back down to where the rest of the party is. Kara is sort of formed up on the other side and we've thrown down as well. Slay. And what'd you say, Quinn? Oh, that just that I would fly down with him. Slay. Alright, then those of you down on the ground, uh, most of you not really able to keep eyes on what was going on, except for maybe Maeve, uh, watch as uh, an eagle Aarakocra swoops down. Uh, and lands a few feet away from you guys, looking very nervous uh, and not coming any closer uh, as Karis and Phineas touch down as well. Um, I think Abana is just going to whisper to the party. Um, if, if they're that, that nervous, I'm going to take a step back because it doesn't seem like I'm the type of person refugees want to speak to. <laughs> um, uh, again, I will stay next to him, ready to grapple him if he tries to flee. <laughs> very fair. Abana will just take a very pointed step, like, step away. <laughs> like, still with the party, but, like, kind of, like, not trying to crowd them too much. Oh, I'm torn. Okay, so, point of clarification. Um, thus far, we have only been treating Brutus as telepathic when he's actually trying to say something. It's not something he can do to just kind of poke someone in the brain to see how their brain is. Mm -hmm. So, if I want to be stupid and try to say something into his head, I have to actually try and say something. Correct? Yes. Okay. Damn! Uh, uh, but, uh, as uh, the Aarakocra and Karis and Phineas touch down, uh, suggestion only lasts as long as the suggested course of action does. And you told him to come down. So. I'm to my friends. I'm yeah. To speak. <laughs> uh, you do, uh, Phineas notice that the spell seems weaker now that one action has been completed, uh, and you get the feeling that, you know, the line could be foggy, depending how interpreted speak to my friends can be. Yep. Uh, That's also why I'm preparing myself to grapple him the moment it looks like he's gonna, like... Yes. So I will tell you, from your sense of your own magic... He will probably bolt at the first sign of aggression, like the spell will break. Uh, however, as long as this stays a, a neutral conversation, uh, the suggestion will hold. Okay. Uh, he kind of fidgets with his feathers and glances around at all of you. Edge, you wanted to talk to me? Uh, I'm Aldos. start, can Ivana try and sneak around to the back of him? Yeah, are you, you being I mean, you just said sneak, so I guess we're all stealth. I, I was about to say this, this seems like the exact <laughs> wrong choice if you're trying to not be threatening. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not trying to be threatening, but it's more to help Phineas. <laughs> like, I'm walking around to Phineas but I'm trying not to startle so I would say that was being stealthy. That's fair. Uh, I would like to step forward to try and give him something to focus on as Ivana is starting to kind of circle. 
um, and just say, Hi, uh, we're looking for a couple of Air Coker. We were hoping they could answer some questions for us. Uh, so I guess first question, uh, do you know another Air Coker by the name of Krajire by any chance? Don't know any air coker called Crazy Ray, no. Huh. Weird. Uh, last we heard, you guys were kind of in the same line of business. You were uh, running messages around on the front lines. So it seems weird to me that you wouldn't know it. I mean, I... I hired someone to deliver a few messages for me, not an air coker, though. Who'd you hire? A kid, uh, some, I, I don't remember his name, uh, twig-like fellow, glasses, uh, I think an elf, or... Uh, Flynn, right? I don't recall a name, didn't ask. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, what were the messages? I'm curious. Why? What are you? Are you committing okay, mail fraud? Are you reading my mail? Uh, no. The guards are apparently Flynn's under suspicion of treason, and we're trying to track down all the people he delivered to. And, That's illegal. Uh, That's a crime. Yeah. Right there. Uh, not during wartime. Weirdly enough, I checked. I was on your side about this, and I guess uh, wartime that rule doesn't apply. I'm not happy about it either, but uh. It is apparently getting people killed. That's crazy. So, you know. Yeah, that's what I said. So, you know, like I said, just trying to uh just trying to track this down, just trying to figure out what's getting people killed. I again, we didn't read the messages. We don't know whose messages were what. Flynn said you were one of the people he delivered for, and we just want to know, you know, whatever you're willing to tell us who they were going to, what they said. If you're not willing to talk to us, that's, you know, what you're doing. But, you know, I, your name has been handed off by your messenger to people that outrank us, and I don't know how well that's going to go for anyone involved. Again, war gets weird. So I'm trying to make sure this goes as well for you as I can. I just... Uh delivered, asked for some messages to be delivered uh, to Romanin. Uh, it's a village not far from here. Uh, mostly private business, trying to get a job and all that, you know, since uh, home was destroyed as, as a bee, you know, kind of gestures vaguely at, around at the camp. Uh, most of us are trying to find work, so I thought maybe if I looked a bit further away, I would have more luck, since most jobs here are uh, either filled or have plenty of people to choose from. Uh, to clarify, Romanin is on the Alliance side of the lines, right? Yes, but it is very, very close to the border right now. Okay. Uh, just wanted to make sure that wasn't something I could immediately call him on. I'm going to roll insight to see if he's lying to my fucking face. Slay, go for it. Uh, let's see. That's a three on the die. I have a feature, though, that affects that. Give me two seconds. I for deceit. I can treat that as an eight, so that is a ten. I imagine right. that still doesn't get me anything. Um, I mean, he seems pretty twitchy, but he just seems like a twitchy guy. So right. it's hard to know if it's because of lying or if just because you guys showed up at his door and said, come talk to us. <laughs> Right, so... Uh, okay. I mean, fair enough, but, I mean, Ramanan's still, like, really close to the front lines. Like, I, I don't mean to tell you your business, but it seems to me that'd be, like, the next stop, as it were. Money's money, and I can fly away from any trouble. Well, I mean, if you can fly, then why not just go further from the outset? Is my curiosity. It's wh why is this any of your business? I'm it. <laughs> what? Why is my mail any of your business? If it's such a problem with the guards, why well, aren't they coming to talk to me? What? What is going on here? Let's put it this way. 
the guy that was delivering mail, I did tell you this already, is being accused of treason, of being, you know, delivering messages of a seditious nature, of playing double agent, even without realizing it. And we've got evidence that that can happen, and people will forget about it entirely. So I'm trying to get a sense of whether or not maybe, you know, you might have had, you know, a similar encounter or something of that nature. And as Brutus is saying that, he is finally going to do the stupid thing and try to speak inside his brain and say, does this feel familiar? Hey, Brutus. Wisdom saving throw? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is it against being frightened or just general? Just general. Fair enough. This is going to go great for me. A 12! Uh, it is not right away. You do see him, like, react to your words. Uh, and he starts to open his mouth to respond. But you've become familiar with the sensation right now. And you are fully aware that it is not fully trying to hide itself, but it is at least being a bit more subtle. You're not sure if that means maybe it's not influencing Aldos currently, but that that hungry presence is definitely within his mind. The moment, the moment <laughs> Brutus feels that, he is going to shout at the top of his lungs, Phineas, get him! I grab him. <laughs> All right. I also grab him. The suggestion ends. That's so crazy. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and make a grapple check. He, so you make athletics, and he is going to make acrobatics against you. And then I have the Phineas, you have a Which is a natural it's... 20 plus 4, 24. <laughs> go on. Assuming it's been less than an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah, it has. Definitely. Uh, uh, well, he rolled a two and only has a plus two, so... <laughs> I would say the nat 20 takes it. <laughs> uh, only just. He, he immediately tries to take off, uh, but Phineas, you not only are able to grab him, but especially with that nat 20, you manage to wrap both of his wings up in your hold, uh, so he can't even, like, try and whack you in the face with his wings or anything. Uh... And after a couple seconds of struggling and trying to wiggle out of your grasp, uh, he gives up and pants a little. I, I, I didn't even do anything. What, what's uh, going on here? Brutus is going to repeat, grab like a wrist, a wingtip, something, uh, with his right hand, uh, focus on his tattoo and repeat his prayer from earlier in an attempt to get the veracity out of here before it can eat his memory. Um, I will tell you, you don't even have to make a religion check. Although you sensed it, when you pray, there is, there is nothing. There is nothing okay. to dispel. Beautiful. The veracity was there, but it's not controlling all those. You're not sure if that's because it's a current thing or what. And when you grab onto him, you're not seeing any of the graying skin, any of the black marks. He hasn't coughed once since he came down to talk with you guys. Granted, there's feathers in the way, so there certainly could be dark spots underneath, but he doesn't seem sick. Yeah, Brutus doesn't trust that. <laughs> um, I'm going to say to Ivana to see if she, can, if she can remove the necklace he's wearing. Oh, yeah, can I try the attack? Yeah, uh, go ahead and roll slide of hand. Yeah, because you said that gave me the heebie-jeebies, right? Yeah. Um, I would also, at this point, like to attempt to tie him up. So I, that Phineas does not have to continue. I have <laughs> manacles. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Curve. Why does... You know what? It's ask. in the Artificer's Adventuring Kit. <laughs> I mean, it's more that we need to get his wings... Bound than yeah. yeah. To be fair, 
shackle his hands, wrap up his wings. I'll say that the two of you are working on that together. Wow, cooperation between these two. That's a plot twist. (laughs) There's cooperation between Brutus, Phineas, and Grimm right now, which is a miracle considering the relationships they all have right now. (laughs) Okay, to be fair, Phineas and Grimm are fine. It's Brutus that's the problem here. (laughs) The problem, child. It, it, it's like it's, it's like a love triangle, but not <laughs> like a hate triangle. <laughs> With those beans, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking fastball special territory. <laughs> um, I got a, I got a fifteen slight of hands. Slay. Uh, then, as the other two uh, get uh, Aldaz tied up and manacled. Uh, Ivana, you step up, uh, and are you just unclipping, uh, the necklace, or are you cutting it off? Um, it, since he's, since the, they're bound, I will, I would just, like, untie it, like, unclip it. It's like, uh, it's got a metal clasp, uh, but the band itself is fabric. Uh, and as you pick it up at first, you don't feel anything there doesn't seem anything of note from you except once it hangs loose in your hand it kind of swings from aldaz's neck to you know dangling from your hand there's a sensation it it looked like just kind of this kind of dull grayish crystal you realize it's frosted glass as liquid sloshes within and you can feel the sensation of that shift of liquid Uh, hold on. Frosted glass with like a liquid inside? Yeah, there's some kind of liquid inside it. You can't you can't see because the glass is, you know, not clear. Mm-hmm. Do I get a sense that this might be the artifact that was spoken about in one of those letters? I mean you can roll Arcana if you want. Cause wasn't it wasn't in one of the letters an artifact was spoken about? Uh, yes. Uh, that is a... 16 arcana? Slay. Uh, so with that... Um... Uh, with that... Uh, you don't think it is such a powerful artifact, uh as what was mentioned or anything like that. However, there is something magical uh, about this liquid, uh, most definitely. And as you kind of, like, hold it in your hands for a moment, inspect it, try to, like, you know, focus and feel the vibes, uh, Mm -hmm. something about it feels very off to you when your skin prickles in that way that feels like something uncomfortable is watching you. Yeah, don't like that. Um, okay, everyone will just pull it in their pocket now. And then we can look into it later. Sly. Uh, as you take it away, Aldo's kind of like fights against the hold again. That That's mine, all right? That's a family heirloom. It's a family heirloom. Uh Uh-huh. Does it have any magic attached to it, maybe? I don't know. I'm not a magic. I said it, not you. (laughs) How the hell am I supposed to know? Go ahead. It's a family heirloom. (laughs) Don't worry about it. That's seven. Yeah. I also want to insight family heirloom. <laughs> yeah, I, I would also like to insight family heirloom. Oh, oh, God. God. Let's uh, limit it to two 19. people. My God. Okay. Can I medicine the bird? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, Grim should check this motherfucker for sure. Yes, you can roll medicine, though I'll hold off on giving you your answer to that. Uh, to answer the family heirloom insight checks, um, with the 19, uh, 
you get the feeling, you know, at the mention of family that this might have been given by somebody important to this guy. Uh, definitely from the way he shifts, he does seem to have some sort of, like, does put some importance into it. You're not sure if it's emotional or if it's just like, hey, that's an important item. Um, heirloom seems strong. It's not old. The fabric seems fairly crisp and new. Yeah. The metal of the clasp or what's okay. holding the crystal in place isn't tarnished at all. This is a, a new, new piece of jewelry. This was made to hold this crystal recently. So we're going to hold on to this for now. Just to make sure it's not dangerous, it's not going to hurt anyone. And maybe if you're good, we'll give it back. What the hell? And during this time, Grim, I presume you're like looking through feathers, checking for anything, any signs of illness. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you don't find anything uh, sickness wise. However, as you are like checking his person, patting him down, flipping through feathers. Feathers could be a pretty decent cushion for not letting your skin come into contact with something. And you do notice, while there aren't signs of illness, there are signs of damage to his feathers on his hands. Hands, wings, air cookers have hands, right? They do have hands. Yeah. yeah. You do notice there is some damage. It is not illness. You can tell from your training that these feathers will molt just fine and regrow back in. But he is certainly coming to something, come into contact with something that might be damaging to regular skin. Uh, Grim's gonna go ahead and ask, where did you get this damage from? I don't know. You touched lots of things in a city like this. Could have been the train. I'm particularly interested in how you received any injury within the last couple weeks, month or so. No injuries? Near injuries. No injuries. Any attacks? Damage? No, when my, when my village was attacked, just... You know, could fly away. Didn't get hurt. Hmm. Are you sure? Yep. Not the fighting salt. Nothing nicked you on the way out? Nope. And what about with your jobs? Come in contact with anything strange? Strange how? I've, I mean, I'm not used to this place, so a lot of it is strange to me. Um, yeah, strange how. Oh, I don't know. Assassins would be a great one, but I'm sure you haven't come across those. <laughs> uh, so assassins, let's say, that'd be crazy. Let's say any wild animals that seemed a little off. No, I I stay in the city. I've flown to Romanen a few times to to apply for jobs. Actually, there were some animals acting weirdly during my flight back from Romanen a few days ago. These big lizards. Um, I'm forgetting the word. Not dragon, the smaller ones. There were two of them. Okay. Maybe. I, I'm not schooled and I don't pay attention to a lot of that. But two of them tried to catch up to me, but I didn't want to be, you know, eaten by scarily flying lizards, so I got away from them. I'm going to be taking these feathers. 
and I'm gonna pluck out at least two of those feathers. What the fuck? <laughs> that hurts, mate. Good. Free chess. <laughs> yes. Uh, remind remind me at the uh, the tree that Please. dear Aldos here here was um, sleeping in. Um, what happened to your hand again? Yeah, my nails started turning black, and Grim wanted to start cutting my fingers off because he said I had plague. I still want to do that. <laughs> Alice, do you... You don't want to get even more sick and to have your limbs cut off, do you? Listen, there's only one tree I've been sleeping in. It's the one you all just saw. If, if you're talking about some other tree, don't know what you're talking about. Uh, the only other tree I've been to was the was the one where I I dropped off letters for the for the messenger guy. Uh, I I don't know anything about that or any plague. I'm fit as a fiddle. Where's the tree that you dropped these letters off to? I don't know. In town. I mean, I guess I could lead you to it. I'm not the best with directions. I haven't had to in like a week now. Why not? I haven't had anything to deliver, have I? But I thought you were looking for a job, so surely you you would be sending more and more letters until you secured employment. Yeah, I decided to stop paying for a messenger, and I've got wings and just flew them myself until those big flying lizards chased after me. They were there's a black one and a yellow one. Really, they should be put down if they're trying to eat people. Does that match the description of the wyverns we saw? Yeah. Or do these sound like <laughs> wild ones? I mean, they could certainly be wild ones. You don't know the ecology of the area. But the two wyvern mm. scouts that you were told that... Sorry, the two wyvern scouts that you met rode a black wyvern and a yellow one. And had been looking for people sneaking messages in between Ramon and, and the city. I don't... Did we actually ask them about that? I don't recall. Uh, no. Last you heard that they were... Was that they were going out again to search for more people. And that was like <laughs> uh, a day ago. Fun stuff. <laughs> Let's, let's head into to town. Why don't you show us this tree you used to drop your letters off at? Right, um... I mean, you've got me all bound up and stuff. I don't want to be paraded through the city. It's kind of rude. Oh. Well, you might, you might be paraded a second time if you get, um charged with treason. I haven't done anything so. wrong. I'm going to call the city guard on you. You're all going to be arrested. A citizen's arrest isn't a here isn't a thing here, you idiots. I'm gonna We literally just uh, told you we're working with the guard. Yeah, I'm I gonna grab him by the scruff of his neck and just start marching him. What the fuck? Like... <laughs> it's like unfortunately for you, we're also working with the city guard. So let's go. What the hell? This is unjust. Unhand me, pigs. Um, <laughs> Wilder is bleeding into this character. Um, yes, Brutus Lee Mulligan. <laughs> Brutus is going to keep up just like a barrage of the most inane bullshit chatter in this guy's head the whole time <laughs> uh specifically waiting to see if the veracity comes back tries to get closer whatever mm -hmm. but in the meantime uh he's just going to be on the receiving end of info dumps about brutus's favorite locks to build and take apart <laughs> as you guys are going uh mave you've still been keeping your ears out keeping your attention sharp uh and as you're leaving, uh, Clover kind of, like, nudges at your hand for a moment, trying to catch your attention. Okay. 
Uh, normally when she's nosing at you, it might be for treats, but even as your hand, like, goes to grab treats or something, she's kind of instead grabbing your sleeve and tugging you back towards the camp. I'm gonna follow. Uh, See what Clover's up to. Yeah. She tugs you a few steps uh, away from the others uh, and then begins to kind of, like, rustle through uh, the leaves on the ground as if sniffing out something, uh, as if she's searching for something. And you have sharp perception, so even with your passive, you catch it. A faint smell. It's this kind of irony kind of sickly sweet smell that almost reminds you of like rotting fruit uh and as you try to focus on it more and hone in on it it has this kind of sulfur-ish aftertaste but like for a smell <laughs> okay uh like and you catches it right. <laughs> and you recognize it uh from before with Flynn. He had had a bit of that smell to him whenever he coughed. Uh, and you're not entirely sure where they are. Clover is trying to sniff them out and doesn't seem to be succeeding on her own. But you get the feeling that there is somebody very sick with that in this camp right now. I'm gonna go talk to Grim. <laughs> Slay. And relay this to Grim. Um. Do you think maybe you could find them, Grim? Uh. I'm sure I could find them. It would take time. You're asking me to sniff. I'm wearing a mask. I didn't know if you had any other inclination to find these people. Um, I would very much like to find this person. I bet you would. Now <laughs> let's not think of harming them right away. You know, I'm, just... I'm not evil. I'm a doctor first. Yeah, um, your practices seem a little bit non-traditional is all we'll say. My practice is very traditional. Anyways, um, maybe we should tell everyone else because it seems this could, especially in these close quarters, it could definitely get out. And um, if it spreads even a little bit further, not too great. Go get Ivana. I'll take Ivana, you go with the group. Very well. Do you want Clover? Clover was the one who found it to begin with. I don't think that they're very fond of me. You feel free to take your mount. Very well. I'll go and get Ivana. Um, so Ivana, Grim wants to talk to you. I guess that's the best way to put it. Oh, oh okay. You... I'll... I'll be back, don't wait up. Should we... <sighs> An F, Chloe. I'm gonna throw... Throw hands! Um, should we, where, where should we meet with you afterwards? Um, I'm not quite sure. I guess just the same area. I mean, we'll be sure to find you. And I'll, Ivana will turn around and jump up to Grim. <clears throat> uh, 
I figure you might be the better one to take with me. According to Maeve, there is more of the illness this way. Potent. I'd rather like to find it. Then find it, we can try. Shall we go on our way? Let's go. I will say that you can either both roll individual investigation checks, or one of you can give the other investi- sorry, advantage. Blech. I have a plus six invest. Yeah, I'll give you advantage. <laughs> I've got plus two. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you for the advantage. You're welcome. Uh, that is an 18. Slay. Uh, with an 18, uh, you start to look for any signs. There are coughs here and there, but illness can be common in places such as this. Uh, however, there is one cough that starts to catch your attention. Very intense, very painful sounding. And you don't have uh, necessarily a, a strong sense of smell, what with your mask on and stuff, and, you know, a hamster dampening your sense of smell. <laughs> <laughs> Hamsters can it confirmed. Uh, real. <laughs> however... Canonical hamster. Uh... However, there is uh, almost a flicker of something as you hone in on that uh, cough. Uh, almost a memory in the back of your mind. And you hear a voice it, in, in a memory, it's not like current in this moment, that you know is deeply familiar to you, but you cannot put a face to a name of it. But there is the memory of gr begrudging admiration for this person. Emphasis on begrudging. <laughs> uh, and you hear uh, a man's voice uh, explaining to you about uh, bloodletting uh, for a means of trying to purge illness, using leeches, the like. And you remember that when you were being taught this, because you realize this is a memory of your school days, you were treating a patient with a powerful cough like this. And as that memory comes to you, you find yourself stopping in front of a, a rather run-down tent uh, with somebody coughing inside. Full force in. Gonna Slay. walk on in. Uh, resting in the tent is uh, one person. Doesn't seem to have even a sleeping cot. Uh, doesn't even have a bag with them. Just has what looks like a, a ratty cloak they're lying on. Uh, a, a darker skinned uh, half elf individual with black hair. Uh, and these kind of. Uh, this kind of pale marks on their cheeks that you can't really tell what they are uh, but they look natural to this person uh, and they kind of cough again as you enter and narrow their eyes can can I help you? Hello my name is Dr. Grimm I couldn't help but hear your ailment. And I was wondering if you would like for me to take a look. Uh, it, it's just something I've had since I was a kid. Well, long-lasting illnesses don't necessarily need to stay in the realm of medicine and magic. Right, um, uh, or I, I'm guessing you're one of the 
medics with the city or something? Something like that. All right. He straightens up, uh, has a, a tattoo of uh, a lizard or, or something of that kind around their upper arm, um, but uh, kind of straightens up uh, and uh, gestures that you're free to examine. All right. Uh, I would like to go up and examine them. Slay, roll medicine. Uh, 15? Right away, yep. very quickly, you can determine that this person indeed has the plague. Uh, from the sounds of the coughs to as you start to, you know, pull aside the scarf and see these dark veins around the throat. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be, like, originating from any one wound. Just at random spots on his body, the veins are darker and stand out more. And there's just that pervasive feeling in the back of your mind that you recognize this. Uh, but again, it doesn't seem to originate from a wound. It almost seems to come from within this person. You said you've had this since you were a kid. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, hereditary or, or, or what. Um, but a lot of people had it where I grew up. Uh, a lot of where people. Where did you grow up? Oh, gosh. Uh, How? Huh? What were you saying, Ivana? I was going to ask how long, like, how many years it's been, like, since the guy in my childhood. Hmm. I'm from a, about a, a day's journey from here. Uh, uh, not exactly a specific name place, but uh, it used to be uh, under the lands of House Corfell. Um, but, you know, the, the, the house fell to sickness of uh, this sickness uh, but it, it's it's been a while you know I, I'd say god it fell when I was uh, a teenager so 20 30 years 20 to 30 years Where did it where did it start on the body? Say again, Chloe. What where where did it start on your body if you've had it for twenty to thirty years? Oh I mean I mean I had it before that. Twenty or thirty years is just how long I've been away. That's when the house fell to illness. Um but I just always have had this cough and stuff. Mm. I mean it, not everyone had it, but a, a lot of people, especially in the the house themselves, they all mm -hmm. uh, and, had it. And how old are you? Uh, probably in my forties. <laughs> Half elves be like. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was asking. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. I'm sorry, who are you guys? Uh, just, um, I'm borrowing this tent from a friend, and I, mm. you know, uh... Well, we're... We're with the city guard investigating, well, just checking out some other things, but we couldn't help but hear your illness and we come across similar and wanted to come and check on you all right i mean i'm i'm not contagious i i, I was checked when i came to the city because they were worried about letting someone so sick in but they they put me in quarantine for a while and eventually deemed that i wasn't contagious contagious or not you're very ill it's more than and just about it, contagion, friend. 
I've seen a lot of people with similar descriptions of an illness popping up more recently. And until a couple of days ago, I didn't think that you could survive for very long with it. And more recently, I seem to be finding people like you who are surviving. You, you certainly have been ill the longest from who I found, especially one that is still alive. And I am currently a part of a research project looking to not just create a vaccine, but find a way to help people like you. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, I have a, a friend that's uh, looking into my illness uh, for me, trying to help. Uh, I, I, I was going to write back to him, but I the guards wouldn't let me back to where I was camping before. Uh, uh, where were you camping before? Uh, there was uh, these uh, empty roots underneath the tree. Uh, nearby uh, the front of the city. Uh, it was pretty quiet. People only came in a little bit. So I, I was camping there, but then uh, like a week ago, the guards said uh, a crime had been committed there and they weren't letting anyone in. So, you... After you? No, I was going to say something out of character. I was just being silly. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so you're borrowing this tent because you don't have anywhere else to go? Uh, yeah. I was uh, living in these ruins before, but I mean, you know, the war was getting close, so I came to the city, and, you know, and now I can't even get my stuff. <laughs> I would like to. Spend more time getting to know the nature of your disease. We have a camp. I can provide you rations. If you would like a place away from here, I'd be more than happy to offer you my place in the tent. I, I'd appreciate it. I, I hate to ask for a favor, but you mentioned you were working with, with the guards of the city do you think there's any way you could get my stuff back? I had I had an important letter there. Well, lucky for you. It's we not can't... just the two of us. We can't promise we can get your stuff. We're a third party of the city guard. But we can ask. Either way, we can try and help. I appreciate it. Uh, um, what's what's your name? Sorry. Oh, uh, my name's Grigire. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. That's why I was like, don't forget to ask his name. We got him back to camp. <laughs> <laughs> At you least guys, to agree to come. Yeah, you guys, BG3 recruited him back to your camp. <laughs> Yeah. Like, uh, the romantic. second I turned away from it earlier, I was just like, that's probably the guy, but Brutus wouldn't care right now. <laughs> we have we have unlocked a romanceable NPC. <laughs> oh, Christ, no. <laughs> Not the plague victim, please, no. You will submit, Brutus. You will submit. Okay, <laughs> Get your kink shit away from me! <laughs> uh, but he gathers up uh, just the, the cloak they had with him uh, and then uh, begins to follow you guys. In the meantime... <laughs> 
those of you with your prisoner. <laughs> uh, are you guys taking Aldaz back to Vinny's camp, or are you taking him to the guards? Uh, he no, said he was leading us. To the oh, right, right, right. Apologies. Yes. Uh, he leads for a while, increasingly ignored. Sorry, increasingly annoyed at Brutus's rambling. Uh, but very quickly, as he leads you, uh, those of you who've been here before realize that he is leading you to the drop point. Uh, that had been locked down by the guards so that you guys could investigate. Yep, called that one. <laughs> and yep. he pauses uh, about 20 feet away, watching as, as the guards are still there even now, uh, gestures towards it. That's where I was dropping the letters. Uh, as you can see, not accessible anymore, so I was flying myself. Phineas is going to defer to the others on this one because he's just joined the group. He's just joined the investigation. So he's just going to keep a nice tight hold on the guy and let the other rest decide what they want to do with him. Uh, so let's see. We've got Phineas, Maeve, and Brutus here. Yep. And... Sad. And Karis? Is Karis here right now? Karis is with you guys here. Yeah. Okay. Just Brutus and Nirvana who went out. Alright, so... Nirvana. Yeah, Grim and Nirvana. Brutus is here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. I'll get it. Uh, I knew what so, I meant. So Brutus is going to stop mentally chattering. Look up at him and say, So I've got some bad news. And he wiggles his fingers. That's where I got the plague, bud! Good for you. What? It, no reaction whatsoever that you were sleeping in a plague den? I wasn't sleeping in there. I told you that. Uh-huh. I was just dropping letters there for the messenger guy. So, just to be clear, you're telling me that I have just told you you were exposed to something that almost invariably kills people who get it, and you kind of don't care. Just to be clear. I'm not sick, not my problem. Real civic minded of you. Yeah. So this isn't my home, I don't particularly care. Now can I go? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I got them. Uh, backwards. That's like I was just looking at other people to see. Yeah. Uh, dyslexia is a bitch. Because, um, see, here's the thing. You were pointed out as someone who was committing treason. And you have literally just led us back to the scene of the crime while also being touched by the same kind of magic causing the plague and is also directly connected to the enemy spellcasters. And you're expecting us to believe that you have nothing to do with it and the only letters you were sending were for jobs. And you haven't even told us what kind of jobs you were applying for. Whatever I could get. Am I, am I uh -huh. officially under arrest? Are you going to bring me before that guard captain or whatever? I mean, I would say you're at the very least a person of interest, and it's going to be up to the guards what happened to you from here on. Right, well, apparently they're more likely to listen to me. We'll find out, I guess. Unless, Maeve, you have a better idea? No, I think that's quite good. Right. Um... Well. Can one person right. please roll me an insight check from this group with him? That's literally what I was just <laughs> about to ask. <laughs> I mean, I have, a, I have a plus eight. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. We should absolutely do it, but I was 
Yeah, I'm still gonna do it. But yeah, I, I think he was just about to be like, can I get a read on him? Because he was like, oh, are you gonna take me before the city, like the guard captain? That for weird, some reason weirded me out. So. He is being very like, oh, do you know who my father is about it? Despite supposedly being a stranger here. <laughs> Do I have a chance to guidance myself, Mr. DM, sir? Yeah, sure. It's not like he can do anything about the fact that you're casting magic about on yourself. <laughs> that bad of a roll, huh? Oh, no, that was before I rolled. Um, 26. Jesus. Oh, shit. Uh, so first with the 15, Phineas, you're definitely right. There's something weird about that. You can't put your finger on it. He's both acting very offended to have been arrested, but also weirdly insistent about involving the guards. You're not entirely sure what it means. Karis, however, you, you of course pick up on that as well, but what, what kind of catches your attention more uh, is that he's kind of looking around. Subtly, of course, but he's looking around as if checking for something as you guys have been walking through the city. And at first you had just sort of assumed he was taken in the sights, maybe looking for guards to call to for help even. But he's looking for something or someone, uh, and he's very focused on it and almost seems to want to go to the guards. Looking for anything or anyone in particular? I uh, just when I get in front of Captain Cardin, I'm going to report you all. That's all. Oh, so you know the captain? Yes. I thought you said you weren't from here. I mean, Why do you know the guard captain? He's. Uh, he's practically the leader of the city right now, with us being, you know, locked down and stuff. You seem very convinced that he's going to be on your side. Mind telling us why? Nothing particular. Hey, Karis. With that perception check... Uh, that is a lie. You hear uh, a distant hubbub. Um, you hear some of the guards shouting, not in like a panic shout, just raising their voices to be heard, uh, shouting uh, things like, clear the way, make way, make clear path, Archmage coming through. Uh, and you notice like a, a crowd uh, kind of passing through the city, uh, people kind of gathering around to watch uh, as a pair of horses uh, are riding towards uh, the guard headquarters. And out of the corner of your eye, you see you see him perk up and kind of narrow his eyes as he watches the two horses. What are you okay. not telling us? No, hang on. I've got a better question. I need to clarify something. Uh, did we get names from the Stone of Far Speech? Like, did li was Lyric named? Were, did we get any more uh, background than just Ivana has a um, a Stone of Far Speech that she didn't want the rest of us to know about? Because I do not remember all of that conversation, and that was all cut off in that recording. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from what you heard, you didn't get exact names but Vinny had told you guys when initially gossiping to you guys about how much she hated Lyric <laughs> uh, that Lyric was the apprentice of one of the Archmages uh, so Brutus is gonna look up and say you know Lyric don't you what who the hell is that uh, that's gonna be another insight check for me I mean, I'm I happy to still give it to him. Karis with that roll Genuine confusion. Okay. Damn, I actually rolled good on that one, too. <laughs> Damn, that's unfortunate. Uh, change of 
lands. We are not taking him to the guards. I don't want him anywhere near Archmages. You don't have right to hold me. You don't have cells. Only the guard captain can decide my punishment, if any. Uh, oh, no, we're not going to let you anywhere near the guard captain. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> Uh, Brutus is gonna look at Phineas and just say, Hey, Phineas, do you want to put him in the tent really quick? I think we all need to have a talk with Ivana. Sure. Brutus? Oh. Yeah? You're technically not speaking in his mind anymore. But you're still vaguely aware. And the prickle of warning across your tattoos is what little you get before you hear the sound of metal making this screeching sound. And you glance down to watch as the manacles almost instantly rust away. And as, uh, as our friend here makes a very sudden lurch forward to run. I'm going to have I'm everyone holding... roll initiative. <laughs> yes. I am holding him, by the way. I know. I, I grabbed him and dragged him, so I haven't let go. <laughs> I know, but I'm yeah. going to have everyone okay. in this group right now roll initiative. That is a 10. Two. 16. Slay. 17. A sleigh. Sadly, none of you are acting before him. As Brutus, you especially feel it, but the rest of you feel it lesser. That hungry, large sensation suddenly billows from, from Aldaz. The manacles rust in a moment and break open. The ropes almost seem to disintegrate. There is a stinging pain up your arm, Phineas, but he is not running away from you guys. It's more of a rapid lunge as he casts the spell. And he shouts very loudly in the direction of the horses and casts the spell. And I will paste this guy, paste this to you guys uh, in peanut gallery as he shouts, Nom insatiabilis fames. And you all watch as an incredibly, shockingly powerful necromatic spell, which this no magic person should not be capable of, uh, shoots forward and strikes one of the figures on horseback. And we're going to end session as Aldaz attempts to assassinate the Archmage. No! Oh, no! <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> wow, guys, that's so crazy. <laughs> I thought so crazy. my group hangers were bad, you <laughs> bitch. Uh, but can everyone write down those initiatives uh, they got into Peanut Gallery, and I will save them for next time. Yeah. <laughs> great. Our first partial party combat. This is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, you guys have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, he -he. <laughs> oh, you fucking bastard! What? What? You guys had heard that uh, there was assassination attempts on Archmages. An Archmage arrived here. You know? It would be crazy. It <laughs> would be crazy. <laughs> uh, oh, you fucker. Thank you so much for playing, guys. Thank you for hosting the session. Yeah. Thank you. Let's assassinate. So let's assassinate Ivana's boss together, guys. Party bonding. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> and it's just funny that the party don't even know that that is Ivana's boss. <laughs> I mean, I was about to say, like, based on what I know of Ivana out of character, Brutus would absolutely be helping this guy if he knew what I knew. But unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, oh. Slay, I have everyone's initiative written down. 
Yay. Beautiful. Schley. God, if I'm going to just having a chill time. <laughs> <laughs> we have the right, now. It's just the right time. We're not, we're yeah. not getting in trouble for this at all. <laughs> no, we're, at, we're, actually, we're actually making friends, Grim. Look at us go. Yeah, you guys are recruiting <laughs> the supposedly romanceable NPC. <laughs> <laughs> that exact gif. Yeah, that is vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I've got I've got another romanceable NPC up my sleeve. <laughs> Ivana getting all the bitches. <laughs> of course, always. <laughs> Uh, I had to make money by themselves somehow. <laughs> I I cannot I wait. Good night, Chaley. Good night. Rest I, well. I cannot wait for Wilder to follow through on his threat of giving Brutus a were rat as a romanceable NPC. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I, I believe my exact words were I mean, you can try? <laughs> like, you are more than welcome to take your best shot, but I don't know how that's gonna go. So. No. No <laughs> wear rats here. A tribe born on the other that? hand. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you mind reminds me of the spelling of the, the, the thing that is in, like, the plagues? Like, heads. The ver ver veracity? Veracity. Veracity. It is spelled V O R A C I T Y. Like the word. Wow. Jinx, show me a soda. That's um, so crazy. Yes. <laughs> I was actually going to ask um, the where they uh, where uh, Kajure saw the weird lizards. I I got the weird lizard bit, and then I I missed the uh, the place that they said that they saw them. Yes. Oh, th that was flying um, on his way back, flying back from Ramen, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, and wasn't that Aldous? Uh, yes, yeah. Aldous saw them uh, flying, uh, chasing him, more like, uh, in between the city and Ramanen. Thank you. Yeah. And they were low-key confirmed to be the Wyvern Scouts you guys met in session one. But who knows for sure? Would be crazy. It is fun. I had a whole thing that I thought I was gonna get a chance to do with Brutus this session, and apparently, uh, the fuck not, because <laughs> we have an assassination plot we gotta track down now. Well, you see, I was supposed to uh, investigate your hand and possibly chop it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and after the re-exposure, like, I was literally sitting there, like, danger sense going off, like, okay, can I find an in-character justification for Brutus to just gut this guy right now? And I was coming up empty. <laughs> it's okay, Phoenix is gonna do it for you, so... I mean, it, Brutus is gonna do his damnedest to help, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh god. Wilder! What?